Welcome back to the channel and a new video on the lovely Bargain Discovery 5. We're going to be cracking on with it in this video. Guys, we got to this stage in the last video. If you missed that video, click here where you can watch it before this one or after, whatever way around you want. Don't forget as well, only 50% of you watching are actually subscribed. It's free of charge. Hit that subscribe button. Let us know that you are there and you are watching. So today we are going to crack on with this one. It has just been waiting for parts. In the last video, we had to jerry rig a bit of an airbox for it. So the airbox has arrived. We've got the front louvers, lots and lots of parts. In fact, I'll show you what has arrived. So as they've been coming in, I've been storing them in the spray booth. And there's quite some large parts. You've got that huge radiator surround. You've got the bumper bar cover underneath. And these do all sort of make up one piece. As they're going together, I will show you. Now, both of these was completely missing off of the car. And we didn't even know that we needed them until we started looking for a parts diagram. And you can see how big they are for those little additional radiators. You've got those electric louvers, air ducts, and of course that air box has arrived as well. I'm going to whip to Guy Salmon, pick up a couple of little brackets that I've had to order from them, like the wing bracket. Chris is going to crack on, and actually, he's got to strip some of that back off in order to get that surround back inside there on the radiators. So, of course, I've slipped out here to get Chris a couple of little bits and pieces. He's got some wiring jobs to do after he's stripped this. So he's asked me to get out, go out and get some black insulation tape. We've actually run out, but he made light work removing that front panel. And that was because in the last video, we said we just had it sat on there gently with a couple of screws in it. We never bolted it on permanent because we knew that that radiator surround had to go on. He's got that fitted on there, getting that bottom one lined up all ready to actually bolt on there and I think he's got it all stripped out. Messing about like I said action stations got the wing bracket got that little surround but normally brilliant Land Rover I never have any problem with them but no. their systems changed something's changed and normally if we order that like now that's here tomorrow morning that's first right. thing that's right but it's changed it's like two days for everything yeah yeah so one extra part that we have ordered has not arrived but fortunately it's not going to actually get in our way. So, like we were saying, you have to, that front panel, luckily we didn't bolt that on no. forever because no. it had to be removed to fit this on. And Chris said, there's even little pins, slots, slots for this to actually go in the sides of the radiator and a couple of little bolts. And you can see just the way it all sits together. And these little guides, I mean, just for instance, that one, actually fitted perfectly in the bottom of the bumper. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, well, well and you was it like, threw us, didn't it? Yeah, you was like, no, nah, that definitely goes in the bumper. And we genuinely, because this car was, let's face it, obliterated up the top half, wasn't it? Yes. It yeah. was all leaning back. We had no idea where anything goes. And this is the truth. This is trial and error. Yeah, you can now see that clips, clips on, on there, there, clips on yeah. there. So, I mean, that was inexpensive, but we didn't even know we needed that no. part. No. And to be fair, um, Rob and Bob at Guy Salmon have been really good. They've oh, sent us diagrams. Fantastic, yeah. But the trouble is, some of those parts are not applicable to this car, are you? You no. get a diagram with everything on it, and there's variant, variants of this, variants of that. Some don't have louvers, some do have louvers. Yeah. So it's kind of a case of going through all the broken bits, trying to look at bits and go, oh, yeah, that looks a bit bit like that yeah. part of it it must have had one of those speaking of that chris you know this surround yeah you went to me it's got a number on it and it wasn't yeah. even a part number it was a engineering number. engineering number but you found the part number through yes. that that's right yeah so this part they actually did one with it was cut there and had two little pieces on it there was one without that that's piece right. on it it's that's just right. everything is slightly different isn't it but yeah. i think we are getting there with it yeah, that's quite a, a good point, actually. Like that number there. Well, Let's we, zoom in a little we bit. We found out now from Guy Salmon is that that's not a part number. Engineering that's number. That's an engineering number, yeah. But uh, there you go, you live and learn. Yeah, but we, you sometimes can... We still have found out quite a lot we through have. engineering we have. numbers. and so, so have they. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So, right, let's actually just continue. We're going to get all of these little bits of plastic out now because... I think a lot of these need to go on 
before actually we can plonk the front panel back on and then we can actually start pushing all these home so there's four bolts for this one and then you can see these these big front panel no, bits no, that go they hold the brake ducts yeah but these ones that go here they have the yeah, same fitting right. that they pushes do. in up they here do. so it's for us it's all trial and error because we never took it apart it got smashed apart that's right yeah let's carry on then mate so the reverse of what he's just done now actually putting that front panel back on but this time it'll be going on permanently there's no reason for that to come back off so that's going to be both of us on there getting all the bolts in it getting them all lined up getting them bolted down and then straight on to the louvers in the center there they're all they're, they've all gone on now chris has done them wiring repairs they can all be plugged back in and everything seems to be lining up lovely amazing amazing progress and i think we just got well we did just luck got very very lucky on a par and it was luck as well now we've fitted that new air box that come from i can't even we'll do that in the numbers anyway we've got the air box and you can see it ends there and then you've got that air pipe in there that ends and there's a little piece missing elbow. like an elbow that goes between but they will not sell that elbow separate they'll only sell that whole intake pipe with that elbow on it and i've just rung the dealer it's on back order and it was 160 odd pound and i'll keep searching they gave me the part number i kept searching for it and chris just said type in l L462. L462 pipe. air pipe. Yeah. And I just typed that in, was flicking through eBay and got probably about six pages in and up one come, 35 quid. Yeah. I quickly bought it because there's no others available. But look at the front of that car already. It really, really is coming together. Quite a lot of wire repairs here, Chris had to do. We see the, the plane wires that were ripped off and the plug was ripped off. And that was actually for those louvers. I think you have one horn plug that was ripped off and various other wires that were actually exposed. I think even that um, yep. sensor. And one of the crash sensors behind here, Rob. That's a crash sensor in there. And the wire was, was one ripped. Side, yeah. yeah. The plug was damaged on it. So really, really has gone together. Well, that is just sitting on there for a moment. We haven't actually sent that home. And the other one's not here yet. That is the part that we're waiting for. But all of everything else down here is all clipped together. Everything seems to be going fine. We didn't want to overdo the time lapse because basically, Chris, if you can just move forward for me. Yep. For, on time lapse, that is all you're yeah, going to you see. see you're going to see the back of Chris and you're going to see yep. his torch. And I just thought, do you know what? Yep. Let's just get on there and get a load of it done. I've been in and out as usual, running around, getting Chris what he needs and doing other bits. But so far, so good. We are now going to just continue on buttoning everything up and i don't think i think the headlights can go in can they really well we can offer them up yeah do you know have we we've got the originals out of this car that are smashed up have we we haven't no. so they may well need programming i yeah. don't know luckily they come with all the ballast but yeah. i don't know if they're going to want programming or not it'll be a new one on us if they yeah. do yes yeah. let's carry on then mate and get yeah. as much of it together as we can so I just want to pick up on the car vertical from the previous video. Of course, when we purchase any vehicle, we always run a check using car vertical. And quite a lot of you commented in a previous video regarding the odometer. And I said it was all going in the right direction. And a couple of you picked up and said, actually, Rob, no, there is a discrepancy there in the mileage. And you can see there 47,407 and then 47,364 and then back to uh, 47,417. But guys, if you actually scroll down a little bit further on the check, which I should have done, you can actually see there 02022 and then 0222. And what that is, is just two inputs in the same month and it's in it's not actually in a particular order so they may have even been exactly the same day but one has to come before the other so both of those inputs are put in there now there is a possibility i would need to go through the mot history but there is a possibility there that one of those was an mot failure and the other one was a pass, and they've just gone in around the wrong way. But I do hope that that does clear it up, and you can see there that on the further month, 0322, 
the mileage actually did go up. So you've got a couple of miles there and there's definitely not ever going to be a mileage discrepancy over 40 odd miles. No one's going to actually wind back a car for 40 something miles, I shouldn't imagine. Don't forget on the car vertical as well, you've got your financial and legal and you've got your damage there and the damage is always clearly highlighted there in yellow and you can see on this particular vehicle it is a category s structurally damaged and can be repaired also you've got your emissions your specs and equipment of course your handy timeline which i always do go on and on about because you can count your previous owners all of your mot's all of your mot failures all of your services, all of your inputs are down there in that timeline. I want to thank Car Vertical for the continued support on the SR UK channel. To benefit from a nice little discount off your check, use the code I'm going to pop up on screen now, or there's a link in the description that will automatically apply your discount. So you know what we're like, no retakes. We just recorded a live bit of video for three minutes. I played it back just to double check. I said, Chris, I can't hear you. This is what we use for our mics, and it's iPhone to USB. Now, this come off of Amazon, and I know it was under a tenner. That's packed up because I couldn't hear him. I've just had to pop around Argos and get one. £45. £45. £35 dearer than Amazon. I will be ordering a spare off Amazon tonight. Let's get back to the yard and continue on with no, this ain't car. often this happens, mate. Retake. Retake. Yep, <laughs> never mind. Unfortunately, with the mics there, there's your headlight. Thank you very much. So we're just going to crack on and actually build a couple of bits of it up. Didn't really want to um, time lapse any of it, like I said, further on. Pin. I'll show them on the camera. That's the top one for the wing, yeah. And then there's this one here, Rob. Underneath. Now that bracket, there's loads of a play in that. Okay. So I've kind of just put them on there to see we get the headlight in and we've got loads of adjustment on that bolt there. And and you will get to that after as well by it looking at like this. It looks like you can, yes. It yeah. looks like you can. You'll probably have to plug yours in And first. you can do yours after. We'll them, I will just you? show that. So you've got a guide pin here on the headlight and you've got one there as well. And then obviously you've got your bolts and your, your mounting points, but... You see the little white piece there is actually where that pushes into those guides. So let's get that fitted. I've screwed them bolts in the holes. Oh really. yeah, I see. That bracket there as well, Rob. Yeah. There's loads of adjustment on that bracket up and down. Oh, is there? Yeah, so again, I've gone like middle of the road. I did notice actually the bracket come on the front panel, but on this um, headlight- There was a spare. There was a spare on it, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, mine's gone home nice. They're a little bit... Well, that one's lined up, so's that. Oh, well, I got lucky. Oh, this, that was it. This one's gone in. Yeah, I'm in as well. So that beats. Doing it really fast and just watching your back, because that's all you see. Yeah, and I think what we do... Might even do it before we tighten them up, you know, Rob. Yeah. Plug them, well, you've plugged in, haven't you? Yeah. Before we go any further, I'll, um, I'll plug this one in. I'll test them. Yeah, because I've repaired that wiring, haven't I? Plus, we don't know the headlights. It's... Is the battery still on this? Yeah, um, it might need a jump pack, we'll see. Oh, no. The battery that's on this is off the Volkswagen Crafter, actually. Yeah, but it might need a jump pack because it's been connected, hasn't it, a long time? Where is so. the key for the Ah, oh, key. Yeah. I just want to show something, actually, just quickly, because... I mentioned it in the last video and someone said, how are you going to do that? And I just want to show what, you know what I mean, Chris, don't you? Yeah. But the key, when it arrived, you can see it's knackered. And someone had obviously had a go at this before and they glued it on and it was all glued together. Now, I know it's Chinese, but I ordered that off of eBay and it was about, about 10 quid, wasn't it? Yeah. Then I ordered a new battery with it and um, all the indicators work. That's promising. I'll, and, the, I'll, and the DRLs. I'll, um, well, that is promising. I need to start it up, Rob. If we ain't got a programme then, mate, we've had it off. Oh, yeah, the right result, haven't we? Right. I can't believe they've come straight I'm gonna, off. And the indicators. What I'll do is, if they work all right, I'm going to put the suspension up 
So I can't reach nothing, yeah? No, it might put the bumper on easier. Oh yeah, good idea. All right. I can't believe they've come straight, I've gone off. They've all gone off now. DRLs, yep. Yeah, headlights. Full beam, yeah. Indicator, yep. Perfect. And you got, have you got any warning light for the headlights? Sorry, mate, I couldn't hear you. Sorry? I couldn't hear you. Have you got any warning lights for the headlights? Uh, no. The only warning lights we've got airbag, which obviously we expect washer fluid low, right rear low tyre pressure. Yeah. Uh, warning triangle. Yeah, that's that will be because there is a fault. I yeah. can't believe that. And the headlights don't need programming. This, um, what a touch. Let's stick it up. That is I'll a let result. you go up, yeah. Watch how uh, high this car goes. That really does go up high, doesn't it? That sounds so lovely now as well, and that's going to be even more quiet when we get the engine cover on there. Do you want me to leave this going, Chris, and we try the bumper on, or? Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. It's ready to go now, uh, is it? I think so. Well, let me just check as I haven't um, put any bolts in. Obviously, we know this, this ducting's missing, but yeah. this is just a test fit, isn't it? It's got to come back off again. Um, yeah, I think we're ready, mate. Yeah? I don't think there's anything in the way there. I'll tell you what we will do, because it has got to come off, hasn't it, if it does go on. Yeah, good idea. Because they're both new, they're going to be quite tight. And, of course, we're going to want to take it off after, aren't we, yeah. when it goes to paint. We've got, we got, again, I'm going to say it, we got lucky getting this bumper off Reclamet we complete. Did. We did. Oh, they go over the top. They do, yeah. Right. How are you looking? Yeah, I'm lining up good. Well, let me just check that bracket underneath, mate. Well, it's going to fall off your side. Right, yep. That's going on. That's going on. Do we send them home, Chris? Well, I think we're going to have to. For alignment yeah because if it does need adjustment we're gonna have to adjust it before we don't want to be adjusting it once it's back from paint do we i've committed now mate Are i'm you? in yeah well, i don't think i'm gonna send mine fully home are you not no because this side wasn't damaged at all if I, if I break that, this that side was damaged on this edge wasn't it so um but look i've clipped that three quarters of the way home sorry hold that fault I'm going to actually just pause the video there and include a picture of the state of this car just over a week ago. Unbelievable already. Check this out. And I think you would agree. It just looks like a completely different car already. I can't believe it's back to that stage. And you were saying earlier, Chris, do a demo. You were st actually standing at the side and you said, I can't believe how much longer the front oh, of the yeah, car is yeah. now. In relation to where the engine is when we was fitting that new belt and idler. Yeah. It's just grown, hasn't it? The, two, the, two foot. It's like just over another two foot on yeah. the front of it. Yeah, so yeah it's a big I, car. I guess, should we move on and get the bonnet fitted? Give well, we've got to have a test fit yeah. of the bonnet and we're not 100% sure on the hinges. They no. don't look damaged, but... You never know. They could be. We've got a pair, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, they're going to need painting. But so we test fit it on these these hinges, I think. Let's so do it, it, mate. Let's do um, it. But Lee, leave it rolling if you want. Oh no, it'll take us a while to get that bonnet on, won't it? If just in case we have any problems, and we've been live for seven and a half minutes. So. Yeah, fair enough. This is the exciting bit, isn't it? Just vacuuming out there. Chris said when this hit a car at the back, the back window exploded because most of it landed on the scuttle panel of this disco. So I've just vacuumed that out. We don't want to get no cuts. We're going to roll with these hinges. Just give them a try. Get the bonnet on there. And as usual, it's going to be up, down, left, right, in and out until we get that absolutely bang on. You can see we're fiddling around with it, moving one of the latches, moving the hinges, until we get it bang on. Even though it's coming off, we want the hinges in the right place, and I think we've got it. 
we are both genuinely blown away how this is going and the fact that how everything is actually lining up. There's like five screws across the front. I'll show you, mate. Can you? Yeah, I haven't clipped it on yet. There's five screws here. Actually, I'm going to get the camera yeah. and show you because you wouldn't believe it. I know I'm going to say it again. We know, we know Chris knows his onions and he's been doing this a long time. But when you see something like that, it really does give you job satisfaction, doesn't it? <coughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Absolutely bang on every screw hole. And like Chris said... There's no screws in that bumper at all at the moment. No. It's just gone on. And that's what you want. You don't want to be... Forcing one it. One of you hanging on it yeah. or pushing against it while the other gets a screw. Clearly there's something wrong, isn't there? Exactly. So it's, um, it but takes a little bit more time sometimes because you're on off. But this one... First, first hit, wasn't it? First hit, it's so gone on. And plenty look of practice, though. So. Plenty of practice. Look at all your gaps. We know there's a few scratches on the headlights, and they're going to need a good polish. Chris is just fitting that look, final and that's piece. Again, look, that is. There's no pressure on that. No. That's gone straight. And it's all gone on. I'm not going to clip that home though, because it's got to come straight back off, hasn't it? I it, will put a couple in there. It has, but if you do send it home. What we will do is when we take the front bumper off, we'll take the grill off with it, then we can get it off. We I think we should send it home because I really want to see it. Compl I know it's a bit of a pain, but... Let's just double check their lining. Because look, you've got... Ah, uh, well, I see, there's quite a lot. That one there. Yeah. That one there, that one there, that one there, and that's those. So yeah. they are still all intact. Maybe not send it home. Look, they look like they could snap off quite easily. Yeah, they? definitely. I think you're right then, rest it there, but we... I think so. The, the bonnet, I mean, we've got that absolutely bang on. Ways, yeah. And those hinges are definitely not bent. What you could see down here, you could actually see uh, clean, where there was no paint. So I said to Chris, oh, I reckon that one there's definitely lifted up. And he looked his side and he said, my side's definitely lifted up. That yeah, one goes... So it goes in there somewhere, does it? No, it goes the other side on the front panel. And the one with a hole on it goes round right, yeah, the course. bottle. So, yeah. See, Something it kind like of fits that, like that, it? yeah. Right. And there's another piece that runs along there. I guess we, we can is, fit that in there a minute. There is, yes. Right, I gotcha. So that one must be... That side, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it comes right up oh, here, Oh, of Chris. course it does, yeah, that's it. it. Yeah. You've got it, mate. We're yeah. running out of bits. Yeah, I think we're missing clips for those. I know them horns are not ours because no, they they're were on the there. No, they spare ones, weren't they? So far, so good. Let's get the rest of this on there. And I think we're definitely plugging the front bumper and check the camera and parking sensors. Mind you saying that, the side, the side ones are gonna keep beeping. Now I actually went to order the wheel arches for this and Chris said, no, hold off Rob, I've seen them somewhere. And yeah, he yeah. actually went through the container and he's found the originals and they're fine. Yeah. Uh, no, there's one in here. Just had the, um, look, I've got it all clamped up there. The socket for the PDC yeah, was ripped just, off. Yeah, but it was hanging on the bu old bumper loom, so I've just done a... There's that sentence. That's section. right, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, so it looks like, apart from that little air duct we got waiting to come in, we're there with it. Right, let's plug this in and see if all these lights work, camera yeah. works, and get that grill fitted. So after the bit of messing around here, plugging the bumper in, Chris getting the sticker off the window, I got inside the cab, and started cutting the airbags out, the passenger one with a blade. When I moved out and went to the driver's side, I warned him three times that the horn's gonna bib. But if you would look at him at the front here and keep your eye on him, the horn bibbed and I still managed to make him jump. But all cut out and we're done. Got a complete car, almost. Fire it up, mate. Then we're gonna try these Little front fogs, I guess. Hopefully Chris can hear me. I think I did tell it, yeah, side lights. Yeah, yeah, both working perfect. There is a, there is a camera on the front. I probably though. need to put it in drive, don't I? Sorry, if, bud. If you want to test the camera, I'll probably need to go in the drive. You might have to. Shall I jump in here with you? Yeah, do. Well, there's a back camera. How'd you turn that rear heater off? Did you turn it off round here? Yeah, I think so, Rob. Uh, well, we're in drive, but mm, I maybe, don't know. Is maybe you just go to camera. Could do, couldn't you? Here you are. Here you are. And I would say they are working 360. 360. Yeah, nice. They're eh? working perfect, mate. Take a screenshot. Oh, can you? I think so. 
Is that the front one? Oh, that's look front. At that. Yeah, there we that's, go. Mate, that's perfect. And literally, sides. What's that from the mirrors? Yeah, like yeah. It. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's good, isn't, good it? isn't it? It's a shame I'm getting a bit of glare here, but I think it's because it's on the camera. Yeah, you might, might have to give it a wipe off. Oh yeah, of course it's it on the is. Camera. That's exactly. Yeah, we'll do that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to jump out now and do it. You're right, though. It's yeah, on the camera. It's on the camera. But literally, you've got an airbag light on. Yeah, turn those fogs back off. The warning triangle has gone to information now. It's gone from a red triangle to an eye, hasn't it? So you got your that yeah info panel. Well, how lovely! Do you know what? It's yeah. actually the glare uh, of them that was affecting that. No, it's not. You're right. It does need a just probably needs wiping. Oh, that is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realise it had a sunroof. I Twin. thought it was just one of them covers that Twin, went back. But yeah, it's fully, fully loaded. loaded, mate. Fully loaded, Rob. Oh, Chris. Heated steering wheel. Have a little drive. Oh, is it? Mm. Have a little drive up the yard. Let me yeah. open the door for you. Yeah, I know okay. we've done it already, but yeah, no, it's I will. together now, isn't yep. it? Yep, yep. I'm well, well, well chuffed. Look at that. If that don't deserve a subscribe, I don't know what does. Let's get it out. I was so reasonably priced because of the state of it. And it actually, do you know what? Was it that bad? No, it wasn't. It was actually all nuts and bolts apart from that end cap, wasn't it? Look how lovely that car looks. It really has squared up very, very nicely. Very, very nicely. It just, anything that's had a whack, especially like high up like that, and it's done the headlights, the grille, the bonnet, and the way it was folded back. It just looks awful, doesn't it? But after just that cap and everything else was nuts and bolts, and to bolt it all back together and it's come out like that, we've actually structurally damaged? Absolutely not. I guess that end cap is counted as structural, but is it? It was riveted on and, and glued. I mean, this side I've done is all clipped up, but... Lovely car, but them sensors are going silly. Yeah, do you know why? Because they're, they're dangling. Hanging. Yeah. I've got yeah. one there. Let's hang that out there. I don't think you're going to odds it, to be honest. Yeah, and then you've got that one there. Chris, I was just saying, I, I, I hope that you would agree. This car looked trashed when we bought it. It, it had. had uh, and I it, think that's how we come to buy it for the money we did. That's what I just said. But yeah. would you agree, nuts and bolts, apart from that chassis end cap? Yeah, that's right. And I was that's saying, right. structurally damaged? Absolutely not. But I well, guess that is structure. A grey area, yeah, that, that is part is, of the structure. That is structure, but... Um, but my argument is it was riveted on with glue. Yeah, it, yeah, that's so, right. Rivets, rivets and glue, that's right. Yeah. That's the modern, modern, modern manufacturer method, isn't it? But... Um, no, and that, I think we've covered it in the previous video. That chassis end cap is forty four pounds yeah. plus the VAT from the dealer, but on back order. Yeah. Um, not and that that's why it's obviously if you broke down the cost of all those parts we've fitted second hand, it would would have come yeah. to. But this car has got so many toys on it. Yeah, it has, hasn't it? You can see it it's is. got everything on it. Yeah. Is there springs in those headrests? There is. Yeah. Now someone did mention in the comments, Rob, about. Um, can you does that work? Yeah. Yeah, try it. Someone mentioned in the comments that you need the remote control, but I believe that you can go into because Amanda had one of these cars. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, it's so, not touchscreen, is it? No. So no, I believe you can go into um, one of these settings somewhere. Let's go home, see if it. You can go into media maybe, and I think you can bring up the rear screens. Oh, can you? R rear media. So these are not like uh, an, an after let's try market. That. These let's are Land Rover. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The screens just come on behind your seat. Now. Did it? Yeah. Yeah. And it was off. So. Harry Potter. Yeah. Philosoph Philosopher's Stone. Right. So Is that's that just about to play it. Is it, it? it? Yeah. Warner Brothers. What? That's built in. Built in. Yeah. You're kidding me. Yeah. Well, you can actually play a movie for the kids in the back. You can, and you yeah. ain't got to pay for it. No, now I think they have their own. 
probably you haven't got the headphones. I think they have their own headphones, and you ain't got to listen to it because it'd drive you mad, wouldn't it? It's fantastic. So, yeah, yeah. A couple of little points while we're here having a chit chat that we wanted to pick up on. Now, Chris does read quite a lot of the comments. I do read a lot of the comments, and we reply to them. And the number one comment lately, you actually did this off your own back. I come in this morning, you said, I've done this, include it in the video. Uh, yes. So yeah. what is the most popular comment on the Land Rover videos lately? You can't insure them. Right. Chris got an insurance quote. I did. From my existing insurer. You currently pay? 550 odd quid for the Volvo that I'm running around in. The 2020 Volvo, Volvo yep. that's insured at full retail yep. money. Yep. That's about 500, fully comp, uh, for use for business and pleasure social domestic and pleasure. yeah use in uh rush hour yeah. blah 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 and so with me no claims 500 525 552 something like that and that's the volvo yeah so i went in and changed it to get a quote on this as if i was changing vehicle yeah and that's what i've sent you over we'll include that now You can and, see the reg number. And as you, yeah, you can see the reg number on there. It was literally £200 different. Less, less than £200. Less than that. Pounds. And we knew that. Mm. These cars are not uninsurable. No. The Disco 5 in particular is not a highly but stolen car. Retail or sort on of. this is a lot higher than the Volvo. It is. So you would expect to pay a slightly higher premium anyway. Exactly. So. But these are not like stolen. No. Um, it's not a Range Rover no. Evoque. No. It's, it, the Evokes are the ones they're, I they're think red that hot. seem yeah. to be red hot. Um, but yeah, there is a video kicking around on YouTube of someone has been to Lamb Rover and they've provided them with the actual factual figures. information from the insurance database and the numbers of Range Rovers that are stolen are a lot lower than Fiestas probably. everyone's everyone's yeah. it's, 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 it's like um, you know everyone on the bandwagon but no I don't know anyone that owns a Range Rover that's had it stolen no I don't personally but yeah everyone says they're all getting stolen. Yeah, that's but right. I don't yeah. know anyone that's had one stolen. Yeah. They do come up on Copart, but so does every other car. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so you're absolutely correct. I don't, they think, do. I don't think it's a... And the other little thing I just want to touch base on, sorry, the camera's facing Lou. If you don't mind grabbing that, Chris, just turn it around, just because I'm going to talk about it now. That is in the comments section just recently. Um, one guy actually got a little bit upset. I genuinely didn't mean to offend him, but... I'm getting it in the comments quite a lot and that's because there's new subscribers all the time and sometimes I do forget that. And that is about the Fiat 500. That's the most recent I've seen it. Can we have the figures when Chris's girlfriend's daughter gets insured on it? Because it's going to be sky high because it's a Cat N. Guys, that's a myth. Category S, Category N. There's no difference, there's no increase in insurance cost. The cost of your insurance will be exactly the same regardless if you've got a car you've just bought from a main dealer or a car you've just bought off of us that's been repaired. Your insurance on the same like-for-like -like car will be exactly the same. The only thing that's going to be different is if you had to claim or you made a loss on that car, you would get paid out quite a substantial amount less. Normally 20%, percent uh, 20% up the, to 30% yeah. less than the retail value of that car. Yeah. So I do hope that does answer. There's no difference. And when you ring your insurance company, you don't say, my car's a Cat S. They're not, you're buying these cars from insurance companies. That's right, it's the insurance We're buying companies these, dispose of them. We're buying themselves. these from the insurance yeah. companies. <laughs> to that, be repaired. To be repaired. Yeah. So yeah. I hope that answers that as well. It's the same insurance companies that are reinsuring Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah. Why you got that in your hand, I know it's gone on quite a lot now. So that is the end of today's video. If you did enjoy it as usual, we'd appreciate that thumbs up. Don't forget, follow us both on Instagram. Selvage Rebuilds for me. Selvage Rebuilds Chris for Chris. Like, subscribe and share. And we'll see you all very, very soon in the next one.